four minutes. Hello, my name is David Stalker. Please give me four minutes of your time to try to convince you to sign the White House petition to have the surveillance, the domestic surveillance review carried out publicly by Congress, rather than in secret by a committee of intelligence community people appointed by the president. Such a committee is going to err on the side of secrecy, okay? And the problem is, is that even beyond the fact that we've got secret courts issuing secret rulings about laws that are hopefully not secret, but we have a government whose interpretation of the law is secret, meaning that what they think the law says is a state secret. That's really astonishing, and it goes against the whole principle of transparency in government. And without transparency, you can't keep your liberty. We also have an intelligence apparatus vacuuming up all the possible information about us that it, it could just, whatever it can get its hands on, okay? And supposedly, it's just the metadata, okay? But before Edward Snowden released all this information, they won't, wouldn't even admit that it was the metadata. So we had the heads of this intelligence apparatus essentially lying to Congress, okay? They lied before. Why are they going to be different now, okay? You don't trust a three-year-old after you've caught their hand in the cookie jar, okay? And on top of this, we have historical precedent, okay? The Roman army, 107, 108 BC, there was a general named Gaius Marius decided that the old way of having the reserves come out whenever there's a war, they lose a couple of battles, and eventually by the end of the war they're on the winning side, great, okay? Maybe they could skip over the losing a couple battles part and go straight to the winning, okay? By simply transitioning to a professional army. The problem was is that they transitioned to this professional army, they structured it so the troops were more loyal to their generals than they were to the country. Great recipe for the generals to then turn and use the army against each other and against people in Rome. Okay, Rome went through two bloody purges within a couple of decades after this, and within two generations they had an emperor. Okay, do we really want to go down this road? Do we really want to risk this? Is the minimal chance that you or I? have to fall victim to a terrorist attack relative to, say, the relatively large chance we have to fall victim to cancer or to a car accident. We're not willing to put governors on cars limiting them to 20 miles per hour. That would save thousands of lives per year. Why? Because it would impinge on our freedom. Terrorism is nebulous, and nebulous fears always weigh high in our minds, okay? But still, we need to have this discussion publicly, okay? Not tucked away, because if it's tucked away, it'll err on the side of secrecy, it'll err on the side of collection, and then somebody will come along and will use it domestically, inside the U.S., against their political opponents. And that'll be the moment that historians, at some point in later time, say, we lost our liberty. Let's not go there. Thank you.